There you are, welcome back. I am just home from Silicon, Adam Savage's Silicon. It's, it's, the, it's, it's a con, like a Comic Con, down in San Jose, California, right in the heart of Silicon Valley. It was incredible. There were all sorts of standard Comic Con things, artists and artist booths and celebrity signings, panels, and on this side, there was also the Savage Makerverse and Next to that was, was just rows and rows of makers and creators and cosplay artists. It was amazing. The, the con itself, Silicon, is almost like the intersection of, of the makerverse and pop culture. It's where cosplay and, and making cosplay collide in the best way possible. It was so much fun. I had an amazing time. I got to see people that I, I've known for years, but I've also got to meet people who I've only met digitally, but I got to see them in person for the first time. In fact, uh, producer David, he is friends with uh, Gigi Edgley from uh, Farscape, right? You would know her from Farscape. So we got a chance to talk to her too. That was a lot of fun. But one thing, one thing that really struck me was this insane looking 3D printer just right on the show floor. It's from Item Farm. I took a picture of it and I posted it to Twitter. I was like, look at this 3D printer. And at filming, there's way more than 150 likes on that photo. Everybody was interested in it. And so producer David and I grabbed a camera, found some time, and we got to chat with Alder from Item Farm. So have a watch and then come back here so we can have a little discussion. There you are, welcome back. I'm here with Alder at Silicon in San Jose. Hey dude. How's it going? This behind me is amazing, and it caught my attention because I've never seen anything like it before. Alders with Item Farm, mm -hmm. and this is the Orchard? Orchard. Tell me yeah. more about it. So the Orchard is different than your normal 3D printer where obviously you can tell, you know, it's got 14 build areas instead of the regular one. Um, the reason is because this machine is built for retail. It's built for schools, it's built for maker spaces, places where you want to make a lot of objects quickly. So one of the things that we're finding absolutely fascinating, so this unit is actually borrowed from our uh, customer over in Santa Clara, where she has a business called Young Art, where she has kids come in, they learn 15 minutes of 3D design, and then they're making their own toys right on this unit. Okay, it's well, high I throughput just, environment. let me stop you for just a sec, because you already have customers. This is an established product. Yeah. How many customers do you have? Three. Three. Okay, so it's still fairly new, right? Yes. Okay, now talk about this customer that you were just telling me about here. So what does she do? So uh, Jin Hee runs a business in a mall, high traffic environment. It's called Young Art. She has a art studio. Before we sold her the machine, so kids would come in, they'd learn, you know, painting, drawing, that kind of thing. So we install our orchard unit in her in uh, her store, and then basically what she says, okay, great. Now I can expand to 3D art. So now she's bringing kids in. They're learning uh, Nomad Sculpt on the iPad and a little bit of Mesh Mixer, and just yeah, they're able to mock up a, their own toy and see it made right in front of them. Traditionally, if someone were to do this, such as, such as her, and she didn't have an orchard, we're, we're talking about Ender 3s and other lower price point consumer 3D printers yep. that she might not have an IT crew ready to run this. And yep. so the problem that this solves is that they're able to bring that, that real life creation of these 3D models that the students and the kids are creating. Yep. How has reception been of this so far in that environment? Oh, it's been amazing. So one of the fascinating things, and I love this, is that she intro the machine last summer. So she has seen a progression where a kid comes in, they learn a little bit, and then they go home, they tinker around with the 3D, and they come in, and then the objects get more and more complex. So the kids are like learning 3D design. And you know, again, we talk about price point. So you know, anyone can go online on Amazon, buy a $100, $200 machine. You've reviewed Absolutely. half of them, I've, not I've 90 percent of them. I've, I've seen many. I love the idea of this because, uh, well, not only is it striking in, in, in the, the vision, right? It looks like, a, looks like an engine, mm -hmm. but uh, I love that your name is Alder and this is the orchard and these are leaves or branches, I would, I would assume. Mm -hmm. uh, one question I did have though, how do you control 14 different, essentially 3D printers on, on one machine? I see one laptop here. Yep. Can we talk about that for a moment? You plug an orchard into your, uh, into your desktop, your laptop, whatever, it's gonna show up as 14 ports that you can address as need be. So you can use your Simplify, you can use your Cura, you can use whatever. Oh, 14 serial ports. So yeah. it's just serial communication with the Thanks. laptop. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. How lo-fi, how cool. 
<laughs> well, so here's the thing. So since we started pushing it out there, we've gotten a lot of interest from places that, quite honestly, they don't have the best uh, infrastructure. So people that are looking to use this as an engine of making things in, let's say, Nairobi or in places in Latin America or other places. The reason is, is that, so let me show you something cool. Yeah, let's go over here. So the build areas are modular. As you can see, you just pop them right off. So what we're going to be doing is introducing more processes. Can I hold it? Yeah, totally. <laughs> this is amazing. I love this. The first module we're launching with is obviously filament-based 3D printing. Next one is going to be plastic recycling. Next one after that is going to be probably etching or milling. Oh, I understand. So with the idea being, it's not just 3D printing. Yeah. You're, you're making a, a platform that, that other disciplines can kind of attach to. Because if I'm looking at this, honestly, this, this is not a high cost unit, which is actually great for the, the use cases. Mm -hmm. You've got a hot end right there, which, and it doesn't look like it's a heated build plate. Um, 3D printed parts, some linear rails, you know, some wires, some guides. It looks not just easy to run, but low, low cost power wise. Mm -hmm. And so I would imagine in the places that you're looking that something like this can go, solar power? Solar, hydro, yeah. There's a lot of machines out there, I mean, I've seen them, you've seen them, that are high speed, ultra detailed, can do all sorts of uh, crazy metal sintering or, or, or nylon powders or just extruding amazing plastics. But yep. they all have their, their niche corners of the market, but you are very much just a, a general purpose idea, something where this can exist, not, not in a lab, but in a house, a street corner, in a, in a world where power may not be readily available and still produce items. Yes, exactly. That's a really cool idea, Alder, I gotta say. Oh, so, uh, for people that are more interested in this, yep. where can they go? And actually, tell them right there. Hey, so, uh, yes, you can find us on Twitter at, uh, at Item Farm, you can find us on Instagram at Visit Item Farm, and our website, www.visititemfarm.com. You may not have an item farm orchard or even access to a print farm, and that's where Zometry, today's video sponsor, has you covered. Anyone with a CAD file can upload their design to Zometry's instant quoting engine, and within seconds, get instant pricing, production lead times, and DFM feedback. With over a dozen manufacturing processes to work with, from various types of 3D printing and CNC machining to sheet cutting, injection molding, and more. No matter how big or small your custom manufacturing project may be, you can start your manufacturing project with Zometry. How about this? Visit zometry.com forward slash 3D Printing Nerd to get your design quoted, produced, and in your hands in no time. A big thanks to Zometry for sponsoring this episode. And now it's time for my final thoughts. Great, right? That was so great. It was wonderful talking to Alder and I'm really thankful we got the chance to learn more about this machine and the, the idea behind the machine, where it can go and what it can do. They were scanning people's faces and then 3D printing them. I had one made and producer David had one made as well. But as you can see from the quality of this print, it's really not quite there. And while this isn't quite there, you have to remember it's a build at a show from a company trying to accomplish the impossible, nearly the impossible. So I, I can't judge everything they're trying to do on this one model. I think that there's promise here in this idea. Inventors and creators, they, they can accomplish the impossible. But I'm really excited that I got the chance to talk to Alder and see this machine up close. And I really hope that when I see them again, either next year at Silicon, or if I'm down in the San Jose area, I get to see the improvements, I get, I get to see throughput, I get to see ideas brought to life. It's just, it's an exciting time. While this 3D printer isn't for me, it's for others. And while this idea isn't necessarily fully fleshed out yet, there's promise. And so just, just take that in mind. Be sure when you go look this up and when you investigate this offering, just keep in mind the, the ethos behind it and the ideas they're trying to propagate and just encourage it. Or if you have an idea, help it. Well, that's it for me. And that's it for me from Silicon. I had a great time. I can't wait to be back next year. If you didn't get a chance to make it this year, hopefully you get to make it 
next year. Uh, if you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, and as always, high five.